Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. So what we want to do in this episode, we want to make the articles clickable so that we can go to the individual articles. So right now, if we go to the URL forward slash article slash five, we will get our dynamic page right here. So as you can see, dynamic right there. So what we want to do is we want to make all of this clickable, then access that single article right there. For anyone that's new, we're working with a fake API called jasonplaceholder.typico.com forward slash post. I'll leave a link for you in the description. So if we click on this one right here, you'll see we get a hundred posts right here. So all the posts. Now what we want to do now for dynamic pages, we want to go to that post and basically access whatever value we want. So in this case, six or seven or five. So if we hit that, we can access that URL for that post. Okay, so let's do that. So the first part is we must make this clickable. So I'll just, all right, so if we go to our single article, so if we click on that, we get to a single article, we want to make it a link. So let's quickly add, bring in our link component in Next.js. The next thing is we pre create an anchor tag. All right, so an anchor tag right there. And then we just cut this out and paste it in there. All right, so we're not done yet. We need to add our href in here as well. So href, let's just do that href. And our href is going to equal to an, two calibrations, back ticks, and then we're just going to access the articles URL forward slash, and then we're just going to add the dynamic ID at the back right there. So article dot ID. Okay. But obviously we haven't bring it in yet. So let's import it at the top. All right. So we've got our link imported right there. So if we click on this, you can see we access that article one. So if we click this, article three now this dynamic page so we can close this now so this dynamic page is this page right there so as you can see dynamic so i'm just going to add some stuff at the back so if i save that is this page that we're going to all right now for dynamic pages we in order to get basically that single article from that url from this url right there there's two things we need we need get static props and get static paths okay all right so the first one get static props and the other one get static paths i will explain this in a second so the first one that we need in here is we need to access this url and make the last part dynamic so whatever value we're passing in here we access that and basically hit that url right so the first part is i'm just going to copy everything in here from our index so that response as well so instead of a string right here i'm just going to make it back ticks okay and then i'm just going to go to forward slash put the dollar sign and then I add params dot id. Now this parameter is we're going to access it from here. So we just pass it in here. So the params like this, and then we put it in like this. All right. So that's the only change we have to make right there. Make this instead of just a string, uh, basically add two backticks next to your number one key on your keyboard. And the other one is we access their response with the data like this. All right. Now, after this, what we do is we need to obviously turn this article. This is a single article, not articles. All right, so let's return. And then we're just going to say articles. All right, so return props and the article. So if you had this as data, all right, so the article, then we can just set it as data like this. All right, so now we've got access to it right here. So we're going to bring in that article and then we're just going to add it. All right, so now we got it all done. So we bring in our articles with its title, everything inside there, but we're not finished yet. Now, the reason why it's needed this, because this is the dynamic values that it needs to return. All right, so Next.js needs to know. So if we go to forward slash five, it needs to get it or in forward slash six, it needs to know all the pages because remember, it needs to pre-compile our pages. All right, and then serve those pages right there. Okay, so it needs to know the different paths to generate that data. But now we're getting a hundred, uh, basically, posts from our API right here. So what I want to do is I want to copy this part right here to let Next.js know how many pages we're going to need. So in this case, we're going to need a hundred. So on there, what we want to do is we need to create the data. I'm just going to set that to await and then the well, the response to JSON like this. Now we're not finished yet. Now what we need to do is, let me just give you an example. For a get static paths, we need to return basically the different paths, okay? So we need to return an object where the paths is an array. All right, and then inside here, we need to create the different parameters. Now the parameters is gonna be an object and then a param, okay, and then we're going to add another object. In this case, it must be the ID because we're referencing the ID like this. So if this was article ID, then you make this article 
ID like that. Okay, but since we made it ID, I'm just going to reference it ID. And then this part is important. This needs to be a string. So in this case, we need a hundred of those. So we need to put one. Okay, and then we're just going to put a comma right here. And then we need to create a hundred of these right here. Okay, I'm just making a joke, but um, that's basically the idea. You need to create a hundred of the, these paths for next year is to know. So if you put one, two, and let me just make it three, and then obviously a hundred. So it needs to know all those paths. All right, but there's an easier way to do this, but I want to show you, you need to create objects with the paths like this. Okay, for next year is to know all the different paths. And the ones that's not included, it will return a 404 for that. All right, so let's quickly do that easier for us. Since we get all the data right here, now it's easier for us to loop over those and actually create paths from that. So let's start over the first one. This is a paths. And what I want to do is I want to access this data, this data right here, and I want to map over it. So basically create a loop. And then for each article, okay, I want to create an arrow function. And then in there, I'm just going to create an object. Right, and then we're just going to create the params. Right, so I can just do a params, and then we're just going to create another one. And in this case, we add the ID, and the ID is going to equal to the article dot ID, and we just want to set that to string. Okay, so I do a string method in JavaScript. So what that will do is whatever ID we get right here, we will turn that to an object, uh, basically to a string. All right, which brings us to another part right here in our get static paths. It's called fallback. All right, now a fallback can have three different values. The first one, and let me just add a comma right there. So the first one, it can be false, okay, or it can be true, or it can be a string called blocking. All right, I'm just quickly going to explain it because this is just a crash course, but if you want to read more about it, you can go and do that in a docs. So let's start off with the first one. Now the first one is now right here. So if it doesn't find a path for that page, it will return a four of four. If it's set to true, it will not return a four of four. It will return a fallback page. All right. Letting us know like, listen, let's say we go to article number. Let's say in this case, we go to 101. That page is not there. Okay. So in that case, what it will do is it will basically serve in most cases, a loading, uh, let's say some pages where if you access them, it's got like a loading icon. You can do that. That's basically the fallback page and then it serves it. Now, when you say is blocking, so a string of blocking, basically it blocks the fallback, but what it does is it basically serves the page that the client actually requested. Right. But there is a lot to explain about it. So I'm not going to deal with it in this course, but if you want to go and read more about it, you can. But there is use cases for it, but you can, by default, we're just going to leave it as false. Now this is a have to include. So by default, we're just going to leave that as false. Right, so if we click on any article right there, okay, it doesn't appear. Oh, I forgot this part right there. This just needs to be between two curly braces like that. So as you can see, we got all our articles. All right, so we got article number one. So let's go to any other one. Let's access this one. As you can see, it got the article right there. Okay, so that's how easy it is to do this. All right, so if you guys have any questions, please ask them for me in the comment section. Everyone has been a bit quiet, no questions. And if you think this is helpful, please let me know. Really appreciate it. Because if you have, if you want me to expand a little bit more on something, please, please let me know. And if you think this is not helpful, please let me know that as well. So I can see how I can improve it for you. But just remember, this is a crash course. I just want to kind of show you guys the basics. All right. So thank you guys for watching. Do all the YouTube stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Adios.